So this is really kind of a, a, de a little bit more of a detailed uh, description of the kind of the safety net provisions that were in the Recovery Act. There were food stamp benefits increases for folks that were getting the maximum, expansion of the child tax credit, which I'll talk about, expansion of EITC. The extra weeks of jobless benefits for the long-term unemployed have been huge for Texas, and we'll talk about that. And everyone who's been getting UI has been getting an extra $25. So really massive uh, impact. Um, and then the one-time payment to uh, many seniors and persons with dis disabilities. The estimate is that over 600,000 Texans were kept out of poverty um, already, really, just within the first year of the Recovery Act, which is pretty astounding. As you can kind of see, uh, 3 million poor Texans boost their incomes by at least $700. You may know that the Recovery Act also uh, picked up a pretty large chunk of the COBRA subsidy uh, for uh, folks that have lost their job uh, and want to continue the health insurance that they had with their former employer. Um, and you can kind of see the eligibility criteria now. Uh, the COBRA, uh, we, the Congress has passed uh, at least one extension to COBRA. It would expire at the end of February. Um, so we know that that may be a, a component of any jobs bill. Uh, right now, the best numbers that we have is nearly half a million Texans uh, would benefit from the COBRA subsidies, but really this is an estimate that was done in February. We really don't have any hard numbers on that. So this, you know, to me is really incredible because this is the stuff that is just now is going to be uh, drawn down um, over the next two years. This is about when people uh, file their taxes, right? And so what they did was they expanded eligibility for the Earned Income Tax Credit, which is the major anti-poverty program. They also expanded eligibility for the Child Tax Credit. I think it's really important to understand this. Previously, in order to qualify for the Child Tax Credit, you needed to be making $12,000. They lowered the threshold to $3,000. So the number of Texans that are now going to be eligible for the Child Tax Credit is you know, close to 1.8 million folks. Um, and so it's really incredible, and as you can kind of see, uh, the money that's on the table. This money, as I said before, most of this money um, has not uh, drawn down. I mean, I think, I think the making work pay, uh, pay tax credit has been, but these other ones are still kind of in the process. So this is for the 2010 and 2011 tax seasons. So this is the fun stuff, and someone was mentioning um, the money uh, that was allotted to Texas to mo what's called modernize our unemployment insurance uh, system. Um, in many ways, the unemployment insurance system is a relic of the New Deal. Uh, it was created when our labor force was predominantly male, uh, manufacturing, and full-time. Um, and many states have really not adapted their eligibility systems uh, to a new workforce that is more service-oriented um, and also uh, has much more gender equity than it did in the 1930s and 1940s. Um, and in, in essence, Texas would have had to make three legislative changes to qualify for $555 million uh, in federal money. Now, this money would have come into the trust fund uh, in one shot. Um, and there was a big debate about this uh, during the previous session. Uh, the Senate passed it uh, 19 to 11. Uh, the House never got to it because of the massive chubbing. Um, but the good news is that we still have until October uh, 2011. Uh, to make these changes. So we're going to be making another run at this uh, in the next legislative session, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about this at the end. Um, but it would have allowed about 35 to 40,000 additional uh, Texans to qualify for unemployment insurance. And I'll just briefly kind of talk about what the changes were. So w the first change is called the alternate base period. So if you get laid off in the middle of May, that's just say of 2010, uh, in Texas, they're not going to count your earnings uh, from January to March, right? They're just going to completely disregard those earnings. Because in the 1950s, it took, you know, two to three months to get information in. So it was all snail mail. Um, and so they built in what's called a lag quarter. So that January to March is that lag quarter. So for a person that's relatively new to the workforce or for someone that has not been working at it the same place for five years, that really disadvantages mostly, mostly women, uh, mostly low-wage workers. Um, and so one of the reforms would be to allow those January-March earnings to, to qualify 
for your computation for eligibility. And so that's the alternate base period. That's the, that's the one that every state must do to qualify for uh, the, the incentive funding. The second change that was on the table was about part-time workers. So right now, employers pay taxes for every worker, whether or not they're full-time or part-time. But if you get laid off from your part-time job and you want to seek another part-time job, you are not allowed to do that. You're actually disqualified from eligibility for benefits. Now, you're saying, this doesn't make any sense. You're right. It makes absolutely no sense. There's really no policy justification for it. It certainly disadvantages working uh, mothers with children quite a bit who work part-time um, and so that they can take care of their kids. The third piece is not that controversial. It's around, uh, there's, a, there's a section of the, the statute called compelling reasons for leaving work. Um, some of this is around domestic violence. Uh, others is if you have a sick kid or a sick mother or a, uh, uh, a sick spouse, uh, you, you're able to actually leave your work and draw benefits. Um, and so those are really kind of the three sets of changes that are on the table. Those will likely be uh, the same sets of changes on the table uh, next year.